This is a Spiral Galaxy M101. Some might think that this doesn't really look like a spiral galaxy. Well, that's because this is just a small zoomed in part of a very large image. There it is, M101 in all its beauty. This is one of the most detailed images of a spiral galaxy ever made. And this is M51 or Whirlpool Galaxy. It's a grand design galaxy, which means it has a very prominent spiral structure and well-defined spiral arms, usually two of them. But where does this beautiful structure come from? In my video on globular clusters, I've said that objects or systems in the universe that have symmetry are usually either spherical, planets, stars, globular clusters, elliptical galaxies, or have a shape of flat disks. For instance, spiral galaxies. Actually, a spiral might appear to be not the weirdest of shapes. Just look at Saturn's hexagon, which definitely formed naturally and has absolutely nothing to do with aliens. But anyway, in the case of spiral galaxies, it's not that straightforward, so let's try to figure it out. In spite of the fact that there are hundreds of billions of galaxies in the observable universe, on a very basic level, there are just a few distinct shapes of galaxies. Elliptical, lenticular, spiral, bird spiral and irregular galaxies. Also, there are rare ring galaxies, I've made a separate video on them recently. One of the main ideas how elliptical galaxies can form is collision and merging of spiral galaxies. The ultimate fate of our own galaxy. In several billion years, Milky Way is expected to merge with Andromeda and become one large elliptical galaxy. Milkometa. Lenticular galaxies probably used to be spirals, but they've lost almost all of their gas to form new stars. And irregular galaxies are probably the result of galactic interactions. Of course, there are also lots of subtypes, and actual formation and evolution of galaxies is way more complicated, and we will talk more about that in future. And one spiral galaxy can also be very different from another spiral galaxy. I've mentioned grand design spiral galaxies, but there are also flocculent galaxies. Their spiral structure is not that distinct, and they may have fragmented, non-continuous spiral arms. The number of arms can be different as well. Milky Way, for instance, is thought to have four major arms. And also how tightly those arms are wound. And, of course, there are spiral galaxies with a bar in the middle. About two-thirds of observed spiral galaxies are barred spirals. Milky Way is one of them. It would take a separate video, or perhaps not even one, to describe the galaxy formation process, and today we're focusing on spiral structure. But I'll still briefly talk about that. This is the illustrious project simulation of the formation of a single galaxy, it's not the earliest one. In a region of higher density, gas clumps together. One of the dominant theories is bottom-up formation, which means that smaller clouds merge and form a larger structure that then becomes a galaxy, and a flat disk appears because of rotation and conservation of angular momentum. For the same reason, planets in our solar system are mostly in the same plane. So, what about spiral structure? forming galaxy is spinning and becoming flatter. Even in everyday life we have some examples of how spiral structure occurs in rotating gaseous or liquid environments. Water in the bathtub looks a little like a galaxy. And what about cyclones and anticyclones? But there are some questions like how stable spiral arms of galaxies are or what are they actually? Well, first we can say what they are not. Look at this animation of a rotating galaxy. Perhaps some will say it's fine, but it's actually not. Here a galaxy rotates as a solid body and in reality it's just not the case. Why? Well, if it was the case, the stars that are closer to the galactic center and the ones that are farther away would have to travel with the same angular velocity. A star here and here takes the same amount of time to complete the full circle. And that's the problem. With the same angular velocity, the actual linear velocity would have to be different. And the star here would have to travel much faster, but that shouldn't be the case. If we are familiar with Kepler's third law or just look at the solar system, we can see that the farther the planet from the Sun, the more slowly it moves in its orbit. Mercury's orbital velocity is 47 km per second, Jupiter's 13 km per second and Neptune's is only 5.5 km per second. And in this case it should be the opposite. If we look at galaxies, it's a bit different. 
decades ago, it was expected that orbital velocities should decrease for the stars that are farther from the center, similar to the velocities of the planets in the solar system. But in the early 70s, Vera Rubin, using Kent Ford's instrument, measured velocities of different parts of Andromeda galaxy. It turned out that velocities didn't decrease with the distance as it had been expected. And galaxy rotation curve that shows the relation between orbital velocity and distance to the galactic center is in fact flat and looks like this and not like this. Later, rotation curves were measured for many other galaxies and they show similar behavior. By the way, the galaxy rotation curve is evidence for the existence of dark matter. The fact that the galaxy rotation curve doesn't go up means that the stars that are farther from the center aren't moving faster in their orbits. That means that spiral arms are not material, solid structures and they don't rotate like this. So rotation of galaxies is differential, which means that different parts of galaxies have different angular velocities. And that brings us to yet another issue. If we put eight athletes here, they would start running at the same time, at the same speed. After some time, we would see that eighth runner would lag behind the seventh. The sixth would overtake the seventh and so on. And that's not surprising, after all, the eighth track is the longest. That's why runners would usually start not at the same line to compensate for the difference in length. Something similar should happen in a galaxy. Basically, when there is differential rotation, stars that are farther from the center lag behind the closer ones, and spiral structure appears. But there is a catch. Differential rotation is very effective in creating a spiral structure, actually, it's too effective. In this scenario, a spiral structure would continue to wind up more and more and after 500 million years, which is not that long, it would be unrecognizable. But spiral galaxies are billions of years old and yet there are so many of them. That's called the wind-up problem. So there's gotta be something else. The current explanation of how spiral arms form is density wave theory. It was developed by Ling Chi Chao and Frank Xu in the 60s. We already know that spiral arms can't be fixed material structures, and that differential rotation should wind them up too much. And that's how density wave solved those problems. This is what a galaxy should look like according to modern understanding. As we can see, spiral arms aren't winding up. They are moving more slowly than stars and gas clouds. If you look at one specific star, you will see that it doesn't stay inside the arm all the time. It gets into the arm and then, after some time, leaves it. A spiral arm is not a material object, but rather a region of higher density and its components are constantly replaced. Of course, in reality, it's happening very slowly. It takes about 250 million years for our Sun to complete one orbit around the galactic center. Spiral arms are regions of active star formation. You can see dust, gas clouds, a lot of young blue stars. That's because in the region of higher density, there is a bigger chance that clouds would collapse and form new stars. Also, when gas clouds get into spiral arms, they can collide with other clouds and gas compresses and that triggers star formation. Why are there a lot of blue stars specifically in spiral arms? Because they are massive and live very short lives of only several million years. They can form and spend most of their life cycle inside an arm and explode as supernovae. In blue and ultraviolet wavelengths, spiral arms are more prominent than in red and infrared light. And less massive stars leave arms and continue their journey through the galaxy, completing multiple orbits around their galactic center. Almost every explanation of density waves you can find contains an analogy with the traffic jam. Imagine a truck blocking one lane. There's obviously a traffic jam. The car slowed down before the truck and after passing it continue with normal speed. From up top, a jam looks like some kind of a stationary structure, but actually it consists of cars constantly replacing one another. There is a part of the road where density increases. That's an example of density waves. But how does it work in galaxies? Well, for a wave to appear, something has to cause it. Let's suppose that initially stars in a galaxy were in more or less circular orbits of low eccentricity. Then something affected the galaxy and orbits got stretched and became more elliptical. And if another event makes orbits turn a little, we get this. Each orbit turned a little relative to the next one. We already have a nice spiral structure. 
Here in the regions of higher density orbits are closer to each other and these are spiral arms. In the description I'll leave a link to a nice animation that shows the effect in motion. Also, every orbit doesn't always stay in the one place, but processes like this. And all of them do it with similar speed. If it wasn't for that, we would see this and not a nice spiral structure which is stable for a very long time. Physicists have a good idea of how stars, gas and dust clouds behave and how spiral arms stay stable. But if the reason is density waves, what causes them? What influences orbits? We don't know for certain what causes density waves, but there are some good ideas. The leading theory for grand design galaxies is gravitational interaction with companion galaxies. There is NGC 5195 galaxy, and it may be the reason of density waves in M51. In the case of the Milky Way, Magellanic clouds may have a similar effect. The problem is, not all of such galaxies have obvious observed companions, so that is still being researched. Also, the galactic bar may affect spiral structure as well as galactic magnetic fields. If density waves create spiral structure, why don't we see spiral arms in other flat and rotating disks? For instance, rings of Saturn. Actually, it's there. Density waves were detected by Cassini spacecraft. They are caused by Saturn's moons. Unlike in galaxies, they are so tightly wound that they wrap around the planet multiple times. In this image, every second line is actually the same spiral arm. So in the case of Saturn, it looks more like this. Spiral arms also could be found in protoplanetary disks. In the flocculent galaxies, fragments of spiral structure are probably formed by a different process, which is called self-propagating star formation. Massive stars go supernova and shock waves reach concentrations of gas. Gas compresses and new stars form. New formed stars that are massive enough relatively soon go supernova as well and the cycle goes on. Add differential rotation and you get some elements of spiral structure. Yes, not every question has a definitive answer, but on the other hand, just a century ago people wondered whether the Milky Way was the whole universe or there are other galaxies. And now we discuss in detail how they form. Scientists continue research and I'm sure we're going to learn a lot more exciting stuff about galaxies in future. Thanks for watching. Links to all of the sources are down below in the description. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.